Book TV attended the recent National Press Club Book Fair to speak with nonfiction authors, including political activist Ralph Nader, who spoke about his new book, To the Ramparts. Ralph Nader, To the Ramparts, how many books does that make for you? I've lost count, probably near 15 or so. What's the message in this one? The message is that Trump just didn't come out of whole cloth. When Reagan was twisting statistics and fabricating stories and saying like nuclear missiles once unleashed can be recalled, Trump was watching the TV. And when Clinton was misbehaving with women and getting away with it, Trump was watching on TV. And when George W. Bush was blowing apart countries illegally like Iraq, unconstitutionally, and getting away with it and getting reelected, Trump was watching on TV. And when Obama went soft on Wall Street and expanded to drone warfare and didn't do anything about trade, emptying out whole communities in this country and creating resentment and got away with it, Trump was watching on TV. Small wonder that he said, I can take this office. Is this the state of our current politics? It is, as long as citizens don't have enough uh, uh, estimate of their own significance and stay home, don't vote, don't engage in town meetings, don't show up at gatherings, marches. Uh, people have to realize that if they don't like what's going on in this country, in Washington and Wall Street, they're looking at themselves in the mirror. And they can turn it around with less than 1% of the people representing majority opinion. And we've proved it again and again. And that's what this book shows. The important thing of this book is you can turn it around. It's a lot easier than we think. Give an example of how that can happen. Well, it's when liberals and conservatives agree on important redirections like a living wage, 75, 80 percent of the people want to raise that minimum wage. That's a lot of conservative workers, a lot of liberal workers. It's an unstoppable coalition focused on 535 people in the Congress. You see, or let's say a full Medicare for all. That has now majority opinion even though the Democratic Party hasn't come out full force for it. That, that's another winner, because that's left-right coalition. When you, when you have a conservative groups and liberal groups walking into a senator's office on the same ground, they just they get scared that the, the, the politicians don't know how to game them. They don't know how to game them. And there, in a book I wrote, and I believe readers think and thinkers read, Peter. <laughs> in a book I wrote, I had 24 areas of convergence where a lot of liberals and Republicans and Democrats agree. A lot of, excuse me, where a lot of liberals and conservatives agree. And that is an unstoppable political force, not only in elections, but between elections on Congress. Criminal justice reform is coming forward in states, liberal conservative support, uh, breaking up the big banks too big to fail, big support on that. Changing the tax system, that goes without saying. They want a much fairer tax system. And most importantly, they want a clean election process. Doesn't matter whether they're conservative or liberal. When you get down to where people live, work, and raise their family, they don't put those labels because they want good schools, they want good roads, they want clean air, clean water, safe medicines, health care. It doesn't matter what the label is. That's what they want for their families. And the ruling groups in this country, going back 2,000 years in the world, Divide and rule is a strategy, and Donald Trump is a master at it. Divide and rule to control the people. And I think the movement in this country should be liberal conservative coalitions, where they really focus on what's on the ground where people live, work, and raise their family. Then the ideology of red state, blue state, tends to dissipate, right? They both want safe food. Well, Ralph Nader, would things have been different, do you think, if Hillary Clinton had won? Well, it certainly wouldn't have been as vicious and vituperative, but she was a hawk. She was a military and foreign policy hawk. She overrode Secretary of State Gates on the Libyan overthrow, which is chaotic, violent, into five African countries. She persuaded Obama to do that. That's Hillary's war. She never saw a weapon system she didn't like. She was very close to Wall Street. That's not a good sign, especially if there's another crash. She should have been with who she always talks about, single moms and children. It took her a long time just to join the Democrats in Congress for a $10, 10 cents minimum wage increase. 
So, you know, uh, while she talks a good game, she was a Wall Street military industrial complex politician. That's not what this country needs. Looking at this title, To the Ramparts, I would say that Pat Buchanan or Donald Trump could have written a book with that title. Yeah, that's true, but you know, I have a different meaning. I have the people informed to the ramparts to generate a deliberative democracy that is productive. Uh, in other words, uh, maybe some of the others would think the corporations to the ramparts, the military to the ramparts. The, the Constitution doesn't mention corporation. It starts with we the people, not we the corporation. It doesn't even start with we the Congress. So the idea is we've got to put modest burdens on our time, not a lot, to go into the civic arena, to get good candidates, to vote on the merits, and in between elections to make sure that the people are sovereign and that they're informed and that their representatives reflect that. Is that too much to ask? Are you kidding? We have 15 million bird watchers in this country. How many Congress watchers do we have? A fraction. All right, one of the most interesting conversations ever on book TVs yeah. in our 20 years was Ralph Nader and Pat Buchanan talking. And again, your message brings to mind peasants with pitchforks, Pat Buchanan's 1992 message. Yeah, well, you know, he knows, he knows how to wake up the press, not like Trump, but, you know, he uses imagery like that. I don't think you need any kind of turbulence. I think you need determination persistence. Just like the farmers in western Massachusetts in 1774, and they circled the Tories' home and, and, and they said, unless you recant, unless you stop being King George III's toady with our courts and with our local government, we're going to stay this way. And we're not going to let you buy anything, and we're not going to sell you anything. And they never had any violence. That was before Lexington and Concord. You have another book coming out already. It's called How the Rats Reformed the Congress. It's a fable, Peter, but it's designed to make people laugh themselves seriously and organize in every congressional district. And you know what? Nobody has paid any attention. It's coming out pretty soon, but it's one of my most important books. And it starts with a very jolting uh, rat invasion of congressional toilet boys. And to cover it up, uh, they got caught by a reporter uh, because so, so embarrassed, right? They got caught trying to control the rat infestment and massive derision around the country led activists to say, hey, people are now paying attention to Congress. Let's mobilize to take control of Congress away from the corporate lobbyists. So I think it's an important book, even though some people have called it disgusting, revolting, other people have called it liberating, and one person said, that's a real bottom-up reform. Well, it's 2018, and Ralph Nader has just come out with To the Ramparts, another book coming out. It was 1964 that Unsafe at Any Speed came out, correct? 1965. 65. All right. Ralph Nader, thanks for your time on Book TV. Thank you very much, Peter. Keep an eye out for more interviews from the National Press Club's Book Fair to air in the near future. You can also watch them and any of our other programs in their entirety at booktv.org. Type the author's name in the search bar at the top of the page.